Hi, today I'm here with Eat the Freak. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah no good. Bad. Good. Yeah, good stuff. Um, if you can just give us a bit of a background into your bands. Uh, yeah. Um, so we all went to school together up in Aberdeen. Uh, we used to, like, practice and stuff. Thought about forming a band when we were, like, 16 or something. Yeah. And then played a few gigs around so Aberdeen. Drumming and yeah. downstairs. And yeah. Stuff. But we'd um, all sort of, like, we dis- disbanded. I'd moved to Edinburgh. Uh, just after school and then like sort of year after year we all slowly moved to Edinburgh and then sort of picked it back up again. Yeah, yeah. Once yeah. we were all down we kind of we played as we were called Big Face then. Mm. Um and after a little bit we just totally decided it's, it's it was kind of like a new start for the band so we went to the freak and um, started playing around Edinburgh Glasgow. Yeah, like yeah, we recorded a EP back in twenty nineteen and then yeah. Release a single and yeah, just kept kicking in that. That's kind of it. Just kind of wondered what your opinion was on the difference between the music scene in Edinburgh and Glasgow. Yeah, it's not quite as good. <laughs> we we I kind of disagree with like we've <laughs> yeah. got different like yeah. Like, see, different. There are some really good venues. Yeah. Like I loved uh, Henry Cellar Bar. Yeah, uh, Sneaky Pete. Yeah, Sneaky Pete's as well. Yeah, um, it's good venues, but I guess Glasgow's just got a lot more. In terms of venues and places to play, yeah, I get. But at the same time, we we did end up playing quite a lot of the same venues. Yeah, yeah I thought that like the Edinburgh scene had it was less of it, but um, there's a lot of room for a lot of experimental music at Henry's. And, yeah, and um, you usually see a, a lot of good bands on it, Sneaky Beats and Leaf Depot, even the Fuzzbag gig stuff like that. Like, yeah. there's a lot of room for people traveling through and like a lot of experimental bands with like. Uh, yeah, I think the one thing that definitely hit Edinburgh just probably, well, about 10 years ago was when we had picked the Picture House, which was about 3,000 capacity, which was perfect for that middle sized venue. And it was about the only one we had and then lasted about five years and then it's gone. So that was the big thing. You just had your new EP, Plume, coming out. And what can you tell us about the EP? We wanted to put something out that was kind of slightly like coherent and felt like it should all be released as one. Um, release yeah and, um, we... I guess we had some of the songs that we were playing like live before the pandemic yeah, and yeah. like hadn't had the chance to record them and we kind of we were like planning to record them just mm-hmm. before the pandemic started and then didn't get the chance so kind of mix them with some new songs and... yeah we're going to release them as singles but I'm, yeah. I'm quite glad that they're all one um, release they go well with each other and um, yeah, yeah make something that it kind of flows they're all quite different sounds as well mm-hmm. like uh, they're it kind of within five songs covers sort of a range of stuff that we kind of enjoy playing and you know yeah um it's i think each track has its own sort of feel to it definitely yeah yeah, yeah. cool and did you record it from home then when it was in lockdown no, we kind of recorded it when like stuff started opening up again. We were able to get into Paul's Halls uh, with Robbie on the Kundalini Genie. Um, so him and Lewis Jowie like recorded it, recorded it over two days. Yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I managed, yeah, just managed to get it done in that like brief time when we were able to. We were quite lucky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just before everything started to close again. So then, of course, like it could get mixed in that time. So. Yeah, we were quite lucky time-wise. Did sort of coronavirus and lockdown impact how you've been able to release that? I guess, so obviously no live gigs, but have it impacted anything else? I mean, I guess live gigs are probably the main thing. Like, yeah. Usually we like, have a big like launch show or something, mm-hmm. as we have done. But it didn't impact us too much, I guess, because we managed to get it recorded and yeah. everything else was done. We were able through. to like get it out to people and stuff, you know, because all that sort of stuff's done online anyway. And... But it, it would be nice to, it would be nice to be able to like gig it and, you know, yeah. sort of showcase it in that sense. But it felt a wee bit weird releasing something and then just being in the stratosphere without any real yeah. seeing anyone who you know you can see what they thought about it or anything like that. So it was quite weird. But I think we wanted to release something in the pandemic. Yeah, like it, it, def- stuff. it definitely feels good to at least have something done after like the year that we've had yeah and something to show for it yeah yeah and it's something out that's more up to date with our sound as well because our, our, our last ep was um 
<laughs> just like getting all our old stuff from when we were wee boys and then kind of changing it a wee bit and then yeah. uh, just sort of out and I'm glad there's something that's more proper there. Yeah. So that's quite a, um, different from your first EP then? Yeah. Well, I, I think we've been saying that like somehow we've managed to, you know, we, we might be coming out of the pandemic a, a bit of a better band. And I think it is just that we've had, you know, the time to actually work on stuff ourselves yeah. and come up with ideas. And yeah. now that we can practice, you know, in, in the flat that we've got, it's... Um, yeah. Like like Louis said, the first release was like it was all songs that we'd written when we were like teenagers yeah. and that. Well, not all of them, but it was a couple of new stuff, and we recorded it all at home. Mm. And I mixed it without like much mixing knowledge at all. Yeah. So it was like it's cool, cool to have something that's proper, like done in a studio and yeah, yeah, mixed properly by someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah, cool. And then did you guys do any sort of socially distanced gigs when things were opened up, or have you done any live streaming or anything like that? We did a live stream like quite early on, I think. And then we did one on the 6th of March, um, one big TV. Yeah. Which, um, that was good. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, was a lot. It's weird to like play in front of, well, not in front of people, but like with people watching. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. um, we've recorded like a live session in our flat as well that we're going to be releasing next month. Yeah. Oh, cool. Is that um, going to be just the uh, like audio, or are you putting video to, like the live video as well? Video as well. Video and audio, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. In this room, yeah, <laughs> just over there. Yeah. When our neighbours were out, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, nice. But yeah, you're lucky to both all be in the same building, I guess, for certainly during this time, and you can yeah get through that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, cool. And who would you say your biggest influences are, guys? We're all like quite like similar, but also separate. Yeah. Is it? Um, I mean, growing up, I guess we like like Ty Siegel and the OCs. Or, Jeff, yeah. Brother, yeah. Jeff, Jeff Brother, Brother was a big influence. Massive, yeah. yeah. Um, and now it's it's still like based on those things, but I think from there, um, it's like grown in our own way a little bit. Yeah, um, we've still obviously got like we're influenced by the bands all around us. Yeah, like a lot of like psych bands, and yeah. garage bands, but also a lot of you know, more, I don't know, stuff that's kind of coming out in the UK just now. Yeah. yeah. Stuff with, like Black Midi and Black Country New York. Yeah. Well. That yeah. kind of like new music that's coming out. A lot of that kind of stuff. Um, it, it's cool because it can give you, can give you a wee bit of like a permission. And um, it's like, oh, I didn't know like whether it's like Black Midi or it's like an Edinburgh band like Raymond or something like that. You'll see something. It's quite abstract, but you really like it. And it's like, in a way, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, that we can also... Yeah, it opens just, the gates a wee bit to that sort of yeah. uh, style, I guess. Yeah, experimental, mm -hmm. just into whatever you really want to do. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. And then what are the, your plans sort of for the rest of this year and going forward? I think we'd definitely like to start working on an album. Mm -hmm. like that feels yeah. to be the next like natural thing to do, to yeah. get an album up. I think we're just going to start writing songs for that and try to get it recorded. At the end of this year, and mm. um, we're going back to Aberdeen in December, yeah. uh, which will be interesting because we haven't played there since we were like tiny. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'll be good to play in like our original hometown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I guess just gigging as much as we can do. Yeah. Like, Once yeah. things are back to normal a little bit. Yeah, try gigging because I mean we've kind of just gigged in like Aberdeen, Glasgow, and Edinburgh. I think it'd be cool to like. Get around the UK and try to do some more cities. I'd love to play Manchester. Yeah, Manchester. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think Manchester for sort of psychedelic stuff and garage rock's pretty good at the moment. They've yeah. got a couple of half like good promoters and a few good things going on along around there. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, yeah. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you very much for talking to me today. That was awesome. Yeah. Oh, awesome, guys. Thank you.